Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Arkham Reporter had mentioned in the Rue Morgue video in the comments. Uh, it says, why don't you go over some good horror magazines? Now, I have. I've gone over both of these on uh, my Bitchu channel and the old channel. Of course, the Bitchu channel nobody really interacts on. And uh, uh, a lot of the stuff on YouTube I have put into storage, let's say. So you probably hadn't seen the videos on these. Uh, these are the two. Uh, these are the two good ones. Okay, uh, Dark Side, of course, a UK magazine, right? And the Scary Monsters, which has uh, gone through different uh, uh, formats, let's say. Since, but it's been around. I think both of these have been around since the '90s. This might have been around since the '80s. But these are uh, these are the two horror magazines that are are on the stands so side by side with Fango and Rue Morgue. Okay, and uh, right off the bat, what do they have in common? The classic horror magazines, okay? But remember, classic horror at this point, as the years go by, it's including the 80s stuff, okay? Uh, in particular, there's a fondness for the 80s stuff and the dark side because of the whole uh, situation in the UK. Uh, where you had the video Nasties, uh, where they actually were banning films uh, that were uh, some of the, the notorious uh, horror films, some from Italy, some from America, and some, you know, some that weren't even that uh, crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do they have in common also? They always have a cool cover. The Dark Side always has a painted cover with a scantily clad woman with the classic horror creature. Okay, so uh, there was a re letter writer in the, one of the uh, room wars who thought the Dark Side was, uh, you know, very ist and ass, you know, ist and isms all over the place. And uh, I like that the uh, uh, the that the uh, the owner of this, the guy who publishes this, this guy, Alan Bryce, uh, uh, you know, he, I know where he stands on a lot of these things. Okay, and Scary Monsters is pretty much it's all about the monster kids, right? The boomers, right? The, the kids who grew up after the war, who were into the horror stuff, um, and. With this magazine, this is literally most of this. It's amazing. It's professionally, very professionally done, but nearly all the content is done by fans. Okay, the, the articles are written by fans. There's a, well, you know, we'll go through them real quick. Dark side. It always starts out with a funny editorial from Alan, right? Uh, growing up in the seventies in London, you know, uh, trying to watch horror films before you have a VHS meant you had to go to the theater. Uh, and there's always funny stories about him working in the supermarket and his dad, uh, you know, uh, uh, slagging him off and uh, all these other things, you know, that are funny. And he always has a lot of jokes. Yeah. The old humor that's common to most, old, you know, uh, you know, guys older than me, which is to say, uh, you know, not politically correct. Uh, also, he made this is cool. This is actually a good science fiction magazine, uh, Infinity, of course. But remember. The irony of science fiction is that it was a cul-de-sac. It was a dead end. Okay, the real, true future uh, of the the infinite future is one of horror. Right? Uh, now you got a lot of cover photos. Real quick, you're always gonna have beautiful, scantily clad women from the '70s and the '60s in these. Okay, unfortunately. Uh, these are some of the most beautiful women uh, that there were. And they're starting to pass on now, like Veronica Carlson here. Rest in peace. Uh, but that's another thing you don't have in Rue Morgan Fango. You have, and I had mentioned it in the video, you don't have beautiful women, okay? Well, the dark side, my man Alan's got tons of photos of beautiful, beautiful women. Look at her. Uh, the Gentleman of Horror, Peter Cushing. Mm. And Ralph Bates, Horror Frankenstein. I remember this on Channel 5. Movie confused the hell out of me. Uh, the ending. But now I realize the ending, it was a black comedy, <laughs> so to speak. Um, they'll always cover something from Italy, right? Because of the, the, the Italian horror needs no, its notoriety is, is well established. They'll always, he'll always, they'll always do something on one of the video nasty films, right? Which one of those was The Evil Dead, okay? Uh, and look, they even, I have never seen this, Within the Woods, the Super 8 film they had done. It's sort of like as practice, uh, you know, and to get investors to make a horror film. Listen, whatever I think of Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi at this point, uh, The Evil Dead is one of the best horror films uh, ever made. Even Varg likes The Evil Dead. <laughs> that guy don't like nothing. Uh, 
Of course, the sequels are not, they're fun. They're not as good. The Evil Dead. Uh, and dude, a USA Up All Night. Do you remember BTD? They would show this on USA Up All Night, uh, and it was uncut. It was uncut. All the gore was in it. It was amazing. So, and yeah, you know, pretty much that's what they cover. They'll always cover something interesting. The reviews tend to you know, everything skews classic. Yeah. Those Ferrati. A great article here. No uh, isms or ists or anything. If anything, they mentioned the fact that one of the things of the original Nosferatu was the idea of the plague. Okay, you just had the Spanish influenza, which killed probably more people than the damn war did. Okay? My grandmother had it when she was six, and then she got she recovered and got diphtheria. So, um, but you know, that's always a lot of diversity. Amazing, real diversity. There he is, William Henry Pratt, Boris Karloff. And so that's the dark side, right? The beast must die. Oh, you could go. That's the thing. Sometimes I go, you know what? I gotta save my my money. Uh, I think maybe I'll skip this one, and then I'll I'll flip through it, right? And then I'll just see. Oh, I gotta get this. Right. Great film, Beast Must Die. Channel Eleven. They showed this on the on the Friday when there was that blizzard, of eighty three. And a very, very good film. This is the hero. A very tragic ending what happens to her, if you remember the ending. Uh, but I guess I don't want to spoil it. But uh, remember how sad it was when Peter Cushing explains to the woman, you know, uh, is there any cure for being a werewolf? Because he got bit you know, after he kills the werewolf. And uh, Peter Cushing's like, there is one cure. And then you hear, Tsh. yeah, dude. Never, they never mentioned this film. When they mention anyway. Not a fan of Kim Newman, but he's a he's an alright writer. So anyway, that's usually what the dark side is. And rounding it out with the door of the dead. I keep saying that's the mo that's your future right there. So and there's the artist to get land. Look at these friggin' yeah. now, scary monsters, obviously. Like I said, it's fan content, but there is you know, there is a uh, mail order business. As the base of it, but like you see, very interactive, just like the old stuff was for the kids, right? Send photos in, send fan art in. Like some of the fan art's really good. There's some really talented uh, boomer. You said I'm not a monster kid. I'm a Gen Xer, but you go everything. You'll always find something new in here. I've never seen this photo of a very young Lon Chaney. Look at it. See what he did. You see this, uh, you know, this son. Uh, poor uh, Creighton. He always looks so sad. You know? I always thought he was a really good actor too. But uh, the old silent films, man. Just the, the whole silent horror films. Like I keep saying, uh, Nosferatu, Caligari, right? Caesar, uh, the Gollum are far more terrifying when I saw them as kids and the pictures of them than Dracula, the Wolfman, Frankenstein. It just there's something about silent films. So, and of course, the, the amazing Man of a Thousand Faces. But just going through, there's a lot of stuff in here. A lot of stuff. A lot of photos. Lots of, you know, these, these, I remember this, man. Channel 9 with the, uh, one of the Blood Island films, the Filipino films with this man eating plant. Uh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Oh, man, I was scared. But. This is scary monsters. You have a lot of stuff. Now, some of it could be, you know, uh, this obviously maybe more people would like this. This is really for, like, maybe guys my age. This is for the people a little older. But remember, uh, the, the the difference between, as a Gen X, I remember all the stuff that boomers and even people before remember. Uh, just a generation or two later, these kids can't watch nothing. And it's their loss. Uh, and oh, I never saw this German horror film, but I remember as a kid seeing this photo in a book, and it scared me. I, I thought this guy was gonna be in my in the in the you know in the closet in my room. Uh, and so that's it. That's the thing. You also have cool stories here when um, a very young, struggling William Henry Pratt was doing manual labor uh, while doing little bit parts here. I actually met Lon Chaney. Uh, and, uh, and how much they like talking about uh, watching boxing back in the day. Little cool things like that. So, scary monsters. Always a lot of stuff. Dinosaurs, right? They, they go over the dinosaur film. When they go over something, they go over in depth. 
very much into look at this look at this something uh, 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 a kaiju from the 18, late 1800s in Paris look at this love this stuff man love this stuff and this the ghost of slumber mountain i don't know if this is a lost film this is supposedly the first film that has stop motion dinosaurs in it even before this one bro this is on youtube right now go check this film out the lost world is brilliant absolutely brilliant and this movie man during the center of earth man that was a good movie you know? all right see this is what i'm saying i remember all these films I remember these you'll remember this stuff right so, in the back, of course, you have the back issues, you know, of these scary monsters going back to the, uh, yeah, so, so there's like a mail order business here, they got this stuff here, this is cool, the models, right, they actually have these monster model kits, not the original ones, the ones that they had made later, which also are now, like, collector's items, <laughs> you know, I don't know if I have the patience to do a model of anything bigger than 172 scale. That's not a tank, but uh, fun stuff. Amigo. Oh, me, look at remember Amigo. Right? Is this the real Amigo? Because Amigo didn't make like these actual like hammer like these actual creatures. Uh, but anyway, Amigo. I remember, remember those. So yo, oh, I'm, I'm geeking out, man. Bro, do you anybody remember the Thief of Baghdad with Sabu? This movie is crazy. The Thief of Baghdad, man. Sabu was awesome, man. And the friggin' this dude, the, the genie, man. Alright, so I'm going off here and look at this. We belong dead. I never even heard of this. Uh, I never even heard. I never even heard of this fanzine. Or this this horror magazine. We belong dead. Uh, maybe we belong dead, but uh, we're gonna keep going on. And look, just real quick, let me end it out. Next Scary Monsters. This comes out now quarterly. That's why it's so big. Uh, the next season is what? The next season is going to be Halloween. And look, you got the horror hosts. Oh, right. Oh, uh, Vampira. But my man, Joe Bob, this is the guy. Yo, fuck MSTK. Okay. This is the dude. Joe Bob was the horror host. He was the intelligent horror host on Monster Vision. This was the dude you should watch. Not those stupid robots. Okay. Joe Bob. So I'm looking forward to this. And that's uh and real quick, the scary monster covers always wrap around. So man, look at all this stuff. This is amazing. This is great stuff, man. So the real horror magazine. Rue Morgan, Fango. You can guess you go you can jump in the lake later.